Anton LaVey's The Satanic Bible includes the nine satanic statements on page 25. Statement number three is, Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. Everything is open to interpretation, and so I personally see a good example of hypocritical self-deceit as being the many Christians who turn a blind eye to the fact that their Lord, Jesus Christ, is Middle Eastern. So I personally dispute the Western notion of Christ as having European features like blue eyes and blonde hair. In reality, I suspect that the domineering religion's savior had black hair, brown eyes, dark skin, and probably looked a lot more like Osama bin Laden than any blue-eyed hippie I ever saw. I find it irritating that the Christian right wants everybody to think that Christ looked like an American. Now, personally, I have no Middle Eastern ancestry. That which happened in the Middle East thousands of years ago last Tuesday is of little concern to myself or my heritage. That said, I grew up within a typical suburban Christian family where I felt like a betrayer to my own ancestors. Why was I expected to worship people and events which happened in an irrelevant foreign country in ancient times? While I don't doubt the noble intention of Christ and Mother Teresa, let's not forget about the Christian Crusades and the Spanish Inquisition. Christianity reigns supreme today partially because of its torturing, raping, and pillaging. It wiped out the Druids, warlocks, pagans, and my other ancestors of old Europe. If modern Christianity can keep stupid kids off of drugs, then it serves a purpose. But it deprived me of my personal history and culture and created a lot of pedophiles in the church. Thus ends this satanic sermon. Welcome to the first edition of Tales from the Critic, where Satanic Views gives critical reviews of movies, music, books, and other productions. We're starting off with a look at the 1969 documentary, Satanist, The Devil's Mask. If you can stomach the bad paper mache masks, butt-naked geeks, spankings, occasional crude editing, and tedious rituals, this movie is a fascinating time capsule back into the 1960s, at a time when Satanism didn't have cliches like tattoos, piercings, heavy metal, or goth trappings. So Anton LaVey's Satanic Church is compared to the Addams Family in this movie. Though there's probably a clean DVD of Satanist by now, I'm critiquing the grainy VHS tape that Something Weird video released back in 1996. The movie is an intriguing look at the origins of modern Satanism in San Francisco. It has sentimental value to me because I lived in that neighborhood and visited Anton LaFay's house more than once. However, even today, this feature-length Ray Laurent directorial is not recommended for kids because of its naked women and frank talk about sexuality. I rate it 8 out of 10. Oh, that's it for that part. All right, here we are outdoors in the Arizona desert. Now, in future episodes, I hope to show you more exotic locales, such as when I was rescuing endangered bats in Australia, Florida swimming with manatees, playing with monkeys, hand feeding raw meat to wild crocodiles in Central America. But for now, I'm just going to start off in my own backyard, literally. This is, in fact, the Arizona desert, although you wouldn't necessarily know it today because it's been all paved over thanks to human population and overexpansion. So let's have a look here in the desert backyard. See something moving underneath this branch here. Well, would you look at that? This is a species of tarantula known as a Mexican red knee. Now normally it's not advised for anyone to pick up any wild animal, but uh, I'm an expert at this. I've been doing this for quite a long time. Mexican red knees are of course more common in Mexico, of course, but they do occasionally migrate north and make it up here into the United States. Uh, as you can see, she's pretty comfortable with being held. Uh, tarantulas get a bad rap, but they're actually very uh, docile creatures, and uh, if she wanted to bite me, she could, but obviously I'm not threatening her. And so I'd say we have, we have both bonded quite well. So I think I'm going to just let her go where I found her. Although a lot of ignorant fools are overcoming their fear of tarantulas, there's still one other arachnid that people are afraid of because it likes to come in even closer than tarantulas. If you live in the desert, it's never advisable to leave your shoes around because you never know what might crawl inside of it. 
This is one of two very common species of scorpion here in the Arizona desert. This is a giant desert hairy scorpion, which bears a resemblance to the common bark scorpion, but it's not as dangerous. However, its stinger is loaded with venom, and uh, I myself have been stung by so many scorpions that I know for a fact that I'm not allergic to it, but if a little kid were to be stung by a scorpion like this, there could be some serious medical problems. However, they don't want to be messed with. They eat crickets and take care of a lot of pests, and so if you should find a scorpion in your yard, please don't kill them. Either let them go elsewhere, or just make sure that no one steps on it. Get your zombie makeup and Walmart Halloween accessories out of the bargain bin because I'm reviewing the CD Comedy of Terrors by Antiworld, the darlings of Portland Death Rock. I'd rather review a rock band here in Arizona, but I don't know anybody here because all my friends are on the West Coast. Anyway, Comedy of Terrors is kick-ass death rock, not to be confused with kick-ass death metal. There's a big difference. So Comedy of Terrors lacks the overdone guitar solos, backwards masking, and vocals that sound like the voice of Sesame Street's cook Monster. The song Tribes of the Moon reminds me of Social Distortion's 1945 and other songs on this average CD combine traditional three-chord ditties, hardcore drums, but less screaming than mystical vocals which are about grim fantasy worlds. It's rare that I would rate generic thrash higher than a 5 out of 10, but Comedy of Terrors reminds me of my teenage years in San Francisco clubs when I hung out with Jello Biafra and the recently departed Dirk Dirksen. So I personally can only rate the CD a 6.5 out of 10 with all due respect to my buddies Connie and Frank up in Oregon. Here we are with Jack Martelli, the guitarist in the scum rock band, Operation Filth. He's also an excellent artist, and I shall now show you some samples of some of his satanic artwork. I can see that you took a photograph of this woman and made it really an interesting picture. Who is she? That's actually uh, my singer's wife. Oh, the singer's wife. So she's married? Well, never mind. I forget it. I had another question, but it's pretty irrelevant now. Okay, so uh, what is this next drawing here? That one is called uh, Portal. Um, actually... Pretty much depiction of hell. Okay. Great artwork, though. Now, the next one here. What is this one called? It's called The Parasitic Deflowering of the Old Horse Slit. How far will a penny get me, lady? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the first episode of Satanic Views. If locals in Phoenix want to take part in future episodes, please contact us. Yeah, and now we're all just going to relax, kick back, and enjoy some molasses. I think we should make Alan taste it first. Well, I believe I'm going to do this. I smell better farts than this. I've had a little bit of this crap when my mum was cooking.